My goodness me, we've been sitting on the edge of our seats for our exciting Chancellor Philip Hammond to inspire us. And what did we get? Almost nothing. In fact, I've been following budgets since 1976, and I cannot think of one that is less inspiring than this one. There is no major standout, other than, of course, an attempt to kick as hard as possible Britain's 5.25 million men and women that are running their own small businesses. That, for me, is the standout, because they're going to hike the national insurance on those people. But beyond that, it is as dull as ditch water. And I'll tell you what's surprising about this. This is the Chancellor who, during the referendum campaign, ardently backed Remain and said that if Britain voted to leave the European Union, we would be weaker, less safe, worse off, fewer jobs, rising prices, and we would be squeezed out of our traditional markets. It would be a catastrophe. And we voted Brexit. And now he's the Chancellor. And guess what? In the whole of his speech today, there was one word that was never once uttered, and that was Brexit. And I'm asking you this evening, do you think, do you agree with me that this budget shows a lack of vision, leadership, courage and inspiration? So please, to get involved. I mean, perhaps you feel uh, as uninspired as I do. If you can, despite that, manage to pick up the phone, ring 0345 6060 If, however, you have faith in this government and think playing it safe and pretending Brexit's not really on the agenda, you can, in that case, text me on 84850. Uh, perhaps you think it was right for the Chancellor not to mention Brexit, in which case, using the hashtag Farage and LBC, you can tweet me at LBC. And, of course... You can watch callers putting me live on the spot on LBC's Facebook page right now. And I'm going firstly to Adam in Thetford in Norfolk. Adam, were you inspired by our magnificent Chancellor today with his performance in the House of Commons? Well, well firstly, Nigel, I, I need to sincerely thank you for everything you've done for this country. Well, you're very sweet. But, what a, but, but this is not about me, it's about the Chancellor. <laughs> It's, I mean, I was under the impression there was a 45 billion excess money floating around. Mm. Uh, and then, as a self-employed person, I see there's a 2% hike on my national insurance. Yes, that's right. Which, which uh, you, know, you know, they're meant to be the party for small businesses, aren't they? But, I mean, we, we've got the, uh, the re revaluation of... Business tax, the business rates haven't we coming up? Yes, we have, and of course, happen, yeah. and of course, Adam. To be fair, that varies according to what part of the country you're in. But traditionally, in the good old days, the Conservatives were on the side of free enterprise and small business. You are absolutely right. Uh, do you, as a small business owner, think this Chancellor is on your side? No, no, no. I think he's. Um, I mean, I mean, with so I, I work at. So we're a small self-employed hairdresser. By the time my money for the chair has gone out and my tax, is yeah. half, half, half of the turnover has gone. Yeah, I mean, I increased it. I tell you what was extraordinary, Adam, was that because there'd been a temporary reduction of national insurance for small businesses, the Chancellor actually didn't just say that 1p, then another 1p, so tuppence more on national insurance, but he actually, in a very disparaging way, said that reductions for small business had cost the Exchequer £5 billion in this year. So he isn't just putting your taxes up, Adam, he's slagging you. He's saying that you've been sponging off the state. And I wonder, I wonder whether this Chancellor understands that 60% of jobs in the private sector in this country come from companies with fewer than 10 employees. Adam, is this Chancellor disconnected from small business? Absolutely, yes. I mean, small businesses are the main employer in this country, I was led to believe. Well, no, they are. They are. They are. They are. Well, Adam from Thetford is uninspired by our Chancellor, as indeed I have to say am I, but I wonder what Michael in High Wycombe has to say. Good evening, Michael. Nigel, good evening. How are you? I'm very well. So what about this Chancellor? Well... It's a bit witless, wasn't it, to be fair? But, yeah, <laughs> he, he, he probably isn't witless, is he? In, in private, oh, I don't know. Market, <laughs> and, uh, you know who, who can say? But, uh, you know, his, uh, 
if you're going to crack gags, you, you've got to make them spontaneous, haven't you, really? It's, uh, it's not very good if they're rehearsed, which they, which they kind of work. It never works, does it? No, it never, never works. But what about, I mean, this, I mean, to me, Michael, he didn't mention Brexit, despite having told us that dreadful things, I mean, plagues of locusts may well uh, descend upon us if we voted Brexit. He didn't even yeah. mention it in the first post-Brexit budget. What's that all about? Well, the only thing I think you can say is that there's, you can infer that there was some sort of mention of Brexit because basically this was a budget for big business today. Yes. So if, if, any, if anyone is going to suffer from big business uh, from Brexit, then it's uh, big business because they're not going to have so much access to cheap um, immigrants anymore for, for late for their labour. But you know, obviously, it's there to hammer small business. But so that's about as good as you can say in terms of reference to Brexit. But where was the where was the conversation about? How much of our contributions we're not going to make to uh, to the EU in a couple of years' time? Mm. Where was the where was the conversation? And then in, the number of the matter though is that the country's bankrupt. I mean, the Western world generally, with possible exception of the United States, is basically bankrupt. So that's what this is really all about. It's, this is all about trying to just eke out a few extra coins from those that might just be able to afford it. And it's you know they've probably done their calculations to work out where this will impact them the least in terms of you know, voter turnout or people voting for wow. the next election. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there may well be, Michael, some cynical calculations, but just a little fact here, which I think is very interesting, is that back in 2010, when George Osborne became Chancellor and David Cameron became our Prime Minister, our national debt was running at nearly 700 billion sterling. It is now, in 2017, one point seven trillion so in the name of of prudence and of austerity and of being responsible compared with and they you know was scathing about labor overspending i mean these guys have increased the tory firstly coalition and now tory government michael have increased our national debt more than the labor party managed to do in 13 years of government it's quite some achievement isn't it well, precisely, and, and uh, you know, it goes back to my point about the fact that the country's bankrupt. Yeah. And, you know, where's the plan to actually get us out of that? And, you know, this goes back to one of your, your shows you did a couple of weeks ago, actually, when you were talking about, you know, where does Labour go with, you know, they've got, you know, goon-like um, Corbyn in charge as, you know, appalling personality and everything else, but there's no policy, there's no plan. No. There's no remedy to actually get us out of this. And and, and, and this is why, this is why you know, they, they one of the reasons, you know, half the country seems to dislike you, which is rather unfair, because... All you did, and the whole time, all you did was speak the truth. I tried to be, Michael, on things like the national debt in the last general election. I tried to be like the little boy in the Hans Christian Andersen story. And I tried to say, the emperor has got no clothes. And you know what, Michael? No one wanted to listen. But one day, maybe they will. And I thank you for your call. And I wonder what John, calling from Hailsham in East Sussex, thinks... Now, John, come on, tell me. Surely somebody must think Philip Hammond has got what it takes. He's a rock star. Are you feeling inspired down there tonight in East Sussex, John? Well, regret regrettably, Nigel, I have to agree with your premise that this is the most uninspiring budget we've certainly had for a long time. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we have, we've got a Prime Minister who, who is obviously was not a supporter of Brexit and uh, also, also uh, with our Chancellor... He was not a supporter of Brexit. So, I mean, we're hoping in hope that they are going to implement Article 50, but at the moment, things aren't looking very good, are they? Oh, come on, John. It's only been eight months. What do you expect? I know, I agree with you. It's all taking forever. We had the House of Lords vote last night. We're going to get a game of ping-pong going on next week. And it all... You know, if they looked indecisive by not triggering Article 50 and allowing Gina Miller to take the court case and the Commons and the Lords and all these uh, delays and diversions, I thought perhaps, in the light of that, what we'd get is a budget that set out a clear vision for a post-Brexit Britain, you know, looking to reach out to the rest of the world. And, John, as I said, I've looked at every budget since 1976, and this is the most uninspiring one I have ever, ever seen. So... Don't yeah, hold your breath. I, I, I regret to have to agree with you on that. I think also it's a terrible shame that we've got the House of Lords and also the Liberal Party as well uh, seem to be totally against any democratic, any democratic, uh, uh, you know, any democratic sort of policies we should be following. Uh, really and truly, the vote has been taken, and in all logic, we should have we should have implemented Article Article 50. Yeah. 
straight yeah. away. No, I, I, John, I agree. But just one minor correction to what you've said. There is no Liberal Party. It, they're called the Liberal Democrats. They are profoundly illiberal because they want to ban everything. And I don't think they're democratic because they want to overturn the result of the referendum. And I hope, John, uh, that you and I can agree on that. And I hope I've really angered some Liberal Democrats out there who will have more than their fair chance over the next 45 minutes to come on and disagree with me. John from Hailsham, thank you. And on Twitter, um, I get Philip Hammond should be hammering those large internet companies, not small businesses. That's from Onions. And I have to say, I rather agree with that. A feeling that giant corporations are avoiding paying fair tax. Of course, one of the points about Brexit is maybe we can start charging corporation tax in this country rather than allowing people to pay their tax in Luxembourg or Switzerland or Ireland or wherever it may be. Another tweet, smoke and mirrors. When you have nothing to offer, use diversion tactics, says Michael on Twitter. How dare they attack small businesses? We should be the backbone heading into Brexit. And he made jokes about it. Um, and that comes from Shampoo Groomers, which I assume is a small business. Whether it's people or dogs, I haven't actually quite worked out, but never mind. But the point is absolutely made well. Look, what are we doing? Surely the whole point of Brexit was to take power away from the giant corporations to enable the 5.25 million people in this country, men and women, who are running their own small businesses, the chance, the opportunity to get on, do well, make money, pay taxes. Isn't that what we need? Uh, and, and that's, you know, I'm asking all of you, you know, do you, do you agree with me that this budget lacks vision, lacks inspiration, didn't even mention the word Brexit once? And frankly, we've been let down today, I think, by Philip Hammond, our Chancellor, like a cheap pair of braces. That's my view. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively here on LBC. It's 7.15. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. British spy agencies work with the CIA to turn TVs, tablets and phones into bugging devices to record conversations and take photographs. Carl Gottlieb's chief technology officer and cyber security consultant at Cognition Secure. We're not talking mass scale here. Generally, if you weren't worried about the CIA spying on you personally before, <laughs> shouldn't be now. You know, this is classic spies in the movies type stuff with tools. Don't need to be worried about your smart TV. And even if it was hacked, all it's going to be hearing about is you're talking about EastEnders and Arsene Wenger's job security here. Well, that's the big question, Mr Gottlieb. Should he go, Arsene Wenger? Yes. Nick Ferrari at breakfast every weekday morning from 7, only on LBC. With Hampton by Hilton, making you welcome at over 40 hotels in Europe. Highways England is here to improve your journey. Have you noticed the variable speed limits on the motorway? They're there to manage congestion, so you can have a smoother journey. They're also the law, so if you ignore them and get caught, you can expect a speeding ticket and penalty points. So if you see a speed limit next time you're on the motorway, it matters that you drive within it. For more information on variable speed limits, visit highways.gov.uk forward slash smart motorways. Life is shaped by choices. Head or heart, dress up or dress down, peanuts or Percy Pigs. At M&S Bank, we know choice is everything. That's why our credit card lets you select the offer that suits your needs. Because nobody knows what's best for you, like you. For more information, search M&S Bank. Credit available subject to status to UK residents age 18 or over. 18.9% APR representative. Terms and conditions apply. Landlords, Direct Line guarantees to be other insurers' renewal premiums for the same cover. Can your insurance do that? Switch to Direct Line Landlord. New customers only. Qualifying criteria apply. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. A new Vauxhall Vivaro comes with four years 0% APR representative, up to four years warranty and four years servicing and roadside assistance. It's easy to drive, easy on the wallet and even easier on the eye. That leaves you free to do more of what you do best. Less getting the van sorted, more getting the job done. Search Vauxhall Vivaro. Conditional sale. Four years 0% APR representative. Minimum 20% deposit plus VAT at 20% on total price. Financed by Vauxhall Finance. Subject to status 18 plus. T's and C's. Mileage limitations and exclusions apply. This is a live update for UK businesses. Every day, millions of consumers are shopping online for quality UK goods. And right now, some of the world's leading online marketplaces have reduced selling costs for UK businesses. To enjoy these exclusive discounts and to find the right online marketplace for you, search Exporting is Great. 
Travel Pack have the right flight at the right price. In fact, we'll price match most worldwide flights if you find one cheaper elsewhere at the time of booking. So, if you need to book a flight, remember the Travel Pack price match. Call Travel Pack on 0208 903 9999. You won't find a better price for your flight. Travel Pack 0208 903 9999. At all protected. Excludes low cost operators. Competitors must be at all licensed. Conditions apply. If you own a Swiss watch and it's time to sell it, speak to watches.co.uk. The whole process runs like clockwork. Rolex, Patek Philippe, Amiga and more. It only takes a couple of ticks and we pay immediately. Or if you just fancy a change, we could take yours in part exchange. From time on your hands to money in your pocket, it couldn't be easier with watches.co.uk. The pre-owned Swiss watch specialist. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. It's budget day and I'm feeling uninspired, almost depressed. This lacklustre Chancellor gave us almost nothing. And this on International Women's Day when you'd have thought the Prime Minister should have been held up as showing us that she's picked the right team to lead the country. I don't think it's been a very good International Women's Day for the second female Prime Minister in this country. That at least is my view. But I am getting some support for the Chancellor, uh, and James tweets me and says, Brexit obviously underlying with the war chest, a negative outlook, we don't want to talk, talk the country down so we're staying quiet. Tell you what, James, he certainly stayed quiet because there's nothing from this budget that anybody will ever remember, unless, of course, you're one of the 5.25 million men and women taking risk, running your own businesses, about to get hammered with an increase in national insurance of 2% over the next two years, which I have to say I think is completely and utterly wrong. Uh, Nigel, thanks to the increase in rates and compulsory workplace pensions, I'm going to have to let one of my three members of staff go. Unfortunate but necessary. Mr Hammond will now have to pay their benefits and lose out on their taxes. That is from an anonymous small business owner. Uh, I also get um, on text, if we need to cut costs... Foreign aid must be cut by at least 75%. Well, I wouldn't fight you or argue with you on that. But I'm asking you, was this the most uninspiring budget in modern history? Or am I missing something? Why was Brexit not even mentioned? Elliot in Finchley, I know, is going to have the answers. <laughs> evening, Nigel. How Good you? evening. I'm fine. <laughs> what did you make of it all? Um, yes, it was uninspiring, um, yep. but I think it actually did a service to the country by the fact that it virtually was like a steady pair of hands until the Brexit negotiation. The last thing you want to do is um, promise something that you can't. We don't have the authority at the moment with uh, with doing much until we actually trigger Article 50, and then it's just two years um, down down the line. So, yes, I understand it wasn't like a sexy budget, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think... Hammond or Theresa May were in a position to do that, especially considering the uproar um, with all the Article 50 trigger issues and whatnot. So I actually think, for continuity's sake, keeping it simple and, um, and kind of simple is far easier now politically than it is going to the judge. I see. Event. So, Elliot, doing nothing is the right option, is it? No, sometimes sometimes not doing, um, doing something more explosive when in a few years' time... The whole system's going to be t um, torn up anyway. Um, so if we went for the jugular, for example, on tax reform, mm -hmm. right, they'll probably spend two years in litigation saying you don't have the authority to do that because of the European Union mandates. You can't do something on that. Um, so I think what they said was let's just sit tight, try and um, shave off the, the edges a little bit, which is uh, frustrating. But I think that's where Hammond is coming from in the mentality is save it for a proper budget when we've got full control, which we all want. I did vote for Brexit, by the way. So, yeah, full control, eight months, Article 50 not triggered, uh, may not even be triggered but next Nigel, week. Sorry, I mean, but, but, Nigel, if I could just say, yeah. well, I'm a big fan of you, a big fan of everything you've done, and certainly you should be um, should be uh, knighted in, in, in that way, um, but just to stick it to the establishment. But... Um, the Conservatives promised um, a referendum. They did give it. It took a while, but they did promise. Whenever yep. they promised, they actually go ahead 
and they've followed through with it, albeit sometimes it's not as quickly as we all want it to be, but they have got a track record of promising things to be done and achieving them just a bit slower than we would have anticipated or like. Well, Elliot, I'll certainly agree with you, <laughs> with you on that, mate. It's a lot slower than I want, but I get, you know... Thank you, Elliot, for your call. Elliot advocating softly, softly, take it easy, wait till Brexit's happened. I mean, maybe, you know, I might be 70 by the time this is all over. I've no idea. Uh, Bill in Surbiton, were you inspired by the Chancellor today? Well, I I would have been as inspired by an actuary reading out uh, early death statistics. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) If, If anyone in the government had been set up to try and inspire the nation, this is the last man who should have done it. Yeah. I mean, really, it was appalling. And, and, and really, it's going back to what yesterday, to your description of the House of Lords, if you're a, a businessman and you hear Hammond today talk about hitting small businesses, and then you read about the £300 a day that the Lords can pick up tax-free, I mean, you would really feel ill. And that's exactly how I feel about it. You yes. feel extremely ill. And a good subsidised lunch bill. You forgot that bit. Oh, I forgot that. You yes. forgot that well, bit. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, and the I'm booze is I'm cheap, on, too. I'm with you. Let's abolish it. Let's get rid of it, for God's sake, because this is just a carbuncle on our nation. Bill, with that poetry, I have to say thank you for your call. The House of Lords is a carbuncle on our nation. It's so good. I'm going to use that at some point in the future. And your text streaming in. This budget is to do with the UK. Brexit has nothing to do with it. Stop crying, Nigel. Really? Really? Is Brexit such a tiddly little event? I thought you were all telling me, you Remainers or Ramonas, it was going to be a catastrophe. Now you're saying there's no need to mention it. Another one here. I wonder what happened to the emergency budget. Where are the scaremongers now? Jim from Titchfield. That's right, Jim. Do you remember our former pasty-faced Chancellor, George Osborne, said if we voted Brexit, there'd have to be an emergency budget because we were going to literally fall off a cliff. And our Remain Chancellor today didn't even use the word Brexit. Mr Farage, the point is, the taxman told him that most EU workers in London use self-employed status in order to pay less on their cash earnings. Thank you from Louise in W9. There may well be some truth in that, and I do understand that point, uh, that there is an argument that people who claim to be self-employed perhaps genuinely aren't, and I get that, but why punish the other five million people who genuinely are self-employed or running their own small businesses? That's my point. I wonder what Jim in Wandsworth makes of today's events. Jim, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Um, The budget today was, as far as uh, self-employed people are concerned, is ridiculous. Most of the self-employed are white van drivers, and they have picked the tab up with the increased fuel bill over the past 12 months. Most van drivers are, are paying 20% more in fuel than what they did last year, um, uh, July, June, sure. when the referendum was on. So they are paying an extra amount out now. That amount is going into the exchequer, and the amount of money that he's going to get off the self-employed pales into insignificance in the amount of money that these self-employed people are paying in extra fuel. But the, the other point I'd like to make, Nigel, is that this could backfire on the government because yeah. I remember my dad saying to me years ago, never alienate people who pay you your money and never and the government should never alienate people who vote them in. It was White Van Driver who voted in the Conservatives and and also voted a lot for, for your party, Nigel. Yeah. And when it comes if if it gets a bit rocky towards the end and they've got to go back to Parliament and she then has to call a snap election these people might have been alienated and other people might not vote for the Conservatives. And look how close it was. It was only what, eleven, twelve seats, the majority in Parliament? It's it's quite close. So it is, watch, yeah. Watch. It's only that Labour are so bad in the polls at the moment, but watch, she's in a honeymoon period at the moment, watch her poll rating over the next few months. And I think this will be a disaster. And it would not surprise me if it's reversed in the autumn budget. Well, Jim, that's a note of real warning and deep scepticism about politics and politicians. Um, and I'm not going to comment on it, but let people just think and reflect on that. I think you may well, Jim 
have a serious point. Um, Andy in Cardiff, are you in Spa? Come on, somebody tell me. This is a great Chancellor and you're dancing in the streets of Cardiff this evening. I am not inspired. Uh, right. The way that I see it is it's a very divisive budget and it's actually a very politically motivated budget as well, in my opinion. OK. You look at yesterday and the discussion you had yesterday about the House of Lords passing these bills back. Yes. Um, Theresa May, more than ever, now needs to hold a higher majority than she holds in the House of Commons to overturn these. Now, this budget, I think this has been set up for weeks in that Labour have been banging on for months and years, in fact, about hitting the self-employed people with greater taxes because they were on 1% of uh, national insurance and everything else. I think this is one to placate the Labour front and middle benches so that they're on side to overturn these um, bills that come back from the House of Lords. And I, too, like your last caller, think that once that's accomplished, they will be calmed down in the next statement. Do you really think, think that? This is, I think this is divisive. I think it's um, specifically motivated to achieve a higher than a higher majority than what she has in the Commons. Wow, Andy. I mean, I'm almost an idealist compared to you, aren't I? I mean, you really think they're behaving that cynically? I do. I think that this has been the motivation all along. I think that Theresa May, um, in her heart of hearts, knew that these were going to come back from the House of Lords. Yeah. And I think that she knew she had to set up a defence to be able to accomplish a majority to overturn them. Yeah, well, Andy, deeply cynical. I'm not saying you're wrong, and I thank you for your call. And a tweet here that says it just reinforced the saying, never trust a Tory. I thought his speech sneaky, Ari the self-employed, and spineless, Ari... Brexit, and that comes from Kay Saxon. Um, text Brexit was not mentioned because May and Hammond have no intention of triggering Article 50. Sorry. I mean, you know, again, I I'm feeling establishment compared to much of this stuff that's coming in now. Just out of interest, what exactly would you have liked to say about Brexit? And that comes from Louise. Let me tell you, Louise, I would like to have heard we're on a path here where Britain is going to become a genuine global trading nation and where we're going to take 120,000 pages of close-type legislation given to us from the European institutions and we're going to start taking the hacksaw to it and getting rid of it and freeing the 5.25 million people in Britain who run our small companies, who create 60% of our jobs, who take risk who are the heroes of the nation, Louise. That is what I would like to have heard, but I heard absolutely none of that. But whether you agree with that or disagree with that, please let me know. But for now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.30 and time for the news with Rupert Barsia. The Chancellor is being accused of breaking the government's promise not to increase taxes. It's after Philip Hammond used the budget to announce that self-employed people will face an increase in national insurance contributions. They'll pay an average of an extra 60 pence a week. An extra £2 billion worth of funding for social care and measures to reduce the impact of changes to business rates were also set out. LBC weather. Mostly dry and mild into the evening. Showers in Scotland, a low of 5 Celsius. Tomorrow, a mix of sunshine and the odd shower and a high of 15 degrees. LBC Travel. Good evening, I'm Andy Lake. Well, the M25 is queuing anti-clockwise between Junction 28 for the A12 and Junction 26 for Waltham Abbey as a tank has broken down. Two of the four lanes are closed just after the Bell Common Tunnel. There are delays around an hour there. Elsewhere on the M25, it's been brought to a standstill anti-clockwise to deal with a collision between Junction 13 for the A30 at Staines and 12 for the M3. Bad delays on the approach there now as well. In Bedfordshire, the M1 is crawling northbound. It's down to just two lanes from four between the Kidney Wood roundabout at Junction 10 and uh, Dunstable at Junction 11. And that's all after an accident there. The A13 looking very slow if you're heading out of London at the moment between the A12 in Poplar and the Beckton roundabout after a collision earlier. And in Hampshire, the A31 stays closed totally in Alton after a serious collision earlier between the Hollybourne roundabout and the A339 Selborne Road turn-off. That's been the case for a good few hours. It's causing some serious delays on all the surrounding roads as well. For more real-time traffic updates, go to lbc.co.uk. This is LBC. Divorce can be expensive. It affects your finances, assets, home, savings, pension, and most of all, your relationship with your children. It's probably one of the toughest times you'll ever go through. Cordell & Cordell understands these issues and helps men maximize their roles in their children's lives. Call now on 0330 60 60 161 
or visit cordellcordell.co.uk. Office in Central London. A partner men can count on. Repeat after me. I, Colin Hinchcliffe, do solemnly swear. I, Colin Hinchcliffe, do solemnly swear. To apply for the marriage allowance tax break. To apply for the marriage allowance tax break. And save up to £220. If you're married or in a civil partnership and one of you earns less than £11,000 and your partner earns less than £43,000, you could receive up to £220. If you were eligible last year and didn't claim, you could get up to £432. Apply now at gov.uk forward slash marriage allowance. What's the smart way to travel to Ireland this spring? Aer Lingus fly from London Heathrow to Cork up to four times a day. So, you could wander through 5,000 years of history in Ireland's ancient east, visit the famous Blarney Castle, or head west to discover the dramatic coastline of the wild Atlantic Way. Prices start from $49.99 each way as part of a return trip. Smart makes it a trip to remember. Smart flies Aer Lingus. Book now at aerlingus.com. Offer subject to conditions and availability. This is the sound of someone breaking into your business. It's that simple. And once they're in your systems, they can do real damage. Hiscox Cyber and Data Insurance for small businesses covers everything from extortion to data theft. Our team of IT specialists will recover lost data and prevent further damage wherever possible, so you can concentrate on connections in the real world. Hiscox Cyber and Data Insurance for the small and the brave. Listen closely. Relax your mind. Now picture a car. It's Italian. A Trident? Yes, a Maserati. Now picture a number. A price. Too high. Focus. No? Well, the Ghibli Saloon starts at just £475 a month, plus initial rental on personal contract hire with Maserati. I know. Unbelievable, isn't it? Find out more at maserati.co.uk. Personal contract hire. The Maserati Ghibli Diesel. Initial rental of 5700 48 48-month term. 9,000 miles per annum. Subject to status. Valid until 31st of March 17. Maserati contract hire. This is a live update for UK businesses. Right now, you can find essential information and services about selling overseas through the government's website for exporters. Find the right information and help to grow your business. Visit great.gov.uk. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Well, I have to say, I believed it to be a totally uninspiring dullard's budget, uh, delivered without vim, without vigour, but worst of all, I think, without vision. And I'm asking you whether you agree with me. And one particular part of it that does make me angry is hammering small businesses by increases in national insurance, despite the fact that David Cameron repeatedly, during the referendum campaign, promised that a Tory government would not increase national insurance for small businesses. And I'll make sure, at the end of the show, you get all of that up on the LBC website, where indeed right now you can watch this show live if you wish to. But a bit of good news for you. Um, Ashton, big company, FTSE 100 company, they do equipment, plant hire, um, massive, successful firm. Their boss, Jeff Drabble, during the referendum, I mean... He just about managed not to slash his wrists, but he was very, very worried about what a Brexit vote would do to their business. Their figures uh, came out today for the third quarter of last year, up 28%. Jeff, go out, have a half of something, celebrate. Brexit's not all bad. But this budget was uninspiring in my view. Am I looking, expecting and asking for too much? I don't know. Morris in Edgware has been hanging on for ages. Morris, good evening. What do you think? Good evening. It's worth hanging on. Is it? Okay. I'm ne- <laughs> Any budget, since I can remember, I've never been inspired. Really? Never. Really? Inspired to do what? Inspired to do what? Well, inspired to joy, inspired to anger. I can think of uh, Geoffrey Howe's budget in 79. What does that do? I can think of, I can think of Nigel Lawson cutting the top rate of tax from 60 to 40%. I can think of lots of budgets where we all actually were talking about the budget for a week because really big fundamental things had happened. Now, Morris, I get... There are times when, you know, you don't need to do big stuff. But what I expected, Morris, given we had this massive Brexit event last year, was at least some vision for the future. 
Yeah, but the thing is this now, uh, that uh, whether it be Mr Hammond, Mr Osborne, Mr Balls and the laborious party... Um, <laughs> Balls. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> what financial kudos do they have? These people are just mouthpieces. And an example of this, out goes Osborne after the Brexit vote. Yep. So the referendum. Yep. Because we're not out of it yet. So out goes Osborne, in comes Hammond. Hammond does something maybe wrong, so yeah, he gets replaced. He's not yet, but he does something wrong. All these people, what financial clout do they know? It's all the people that you don't mention, no one mentions, about the advisors behind the scenes. They're the ones to have a go at. They're the ones that maybe ought to Well, you're certainly true, R- Morris, you're certainly right that very often with these things it's a revolving door. Although, of course, we did have Gordon Brown as Chancellor for, what was it, almost uh, ten years. Yeah. And wasn't he great? Wasn't he marvellous? I thought, oh, selling yeah. all that gold, selling 300 oh, tonnes of gold at $284 an ounce, wasn't he a genius, Morris? Yeah, who advised him? Do you know, I, 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 I can't who imagine... He doesn't know anything Do about you know, I can't imagine a GCSE economic student would have announced to the world the 17 dates on which they were going to sell gold and the quantities at which they were going to sell them. So so whether they're short-term, Morris, whether they're long-term, like Gordon Brown, whoever their advisors are, I get your point, they can be useless. But at least what I want to see as we head towards Brexit is some vision, some idea of where we're going. And I think, Morris, today, he failed in that completely. Do you agree with me? I, I understand what you're saying, but there's one other thing. Yep. They cannot they cannot put all their cards on the table yet, the Conservative Party. They say what's happening uh, when we uh, regarding the negotiations and like like yes. you and your followers, you hadn't got any plans. If you had, what were they? You had no nego- you had no nego- negotiations well with other countries. What I would have done, Morris I'd have sent a signal. You, would, you never said you had actually done it. I would say, uh, Morris, no Morris, I would have sent a signal today if I had anything to do with it, and I would have aimed it specifically at the five and a quarter million small business people in this country, and I would have said, once Brexit's happened, I promise you, with the Great Repeal Bill, we are going to lift the weight of regulatory burden off your shoulders to allow you to spend your time not pursuing red tape, but out there making profits and employing people. Wouldn't that, Morris, have at least been something? I understand you, but you said the word promise. You told us, said it quite truly, but Cameron yep. said this about businesses, promises. Don't believe the word promise when it comes to politics. <laughs> well, I, I get that. But... Listen, I know, listen, I know something which I will not put on air. I've said it after it happened. In the 1997 uh, election, just prior to that, Brown was up to something. I can tell you if you want to know it privately. I can tell your producer. If, OK, if you do that, Morris, because, you know, it's a family show and, uh, and uh, it sounds like it could be quite spicy. And I thank you for your call. And I'm going to move to Clive in Woking. Uh, Clive, were you inspired by this budget? Was it a good budget? Um, well, I, indifferently, I don't think I needed to be inspired. I wanted to hear that the, the country and... More importantly, the Chancellor weren't going to make any knee-jerk reactions and feed the fuel of the idiots in Brussels. Um, you know, I'm a, I run my own business, you know, so the NI will hit me, but 60p a week? Pff, take it or leave it. You can't even buy a quarter of a pint of beer around here where I live for that money. Right. Um, and I think the other changes he made to dividends to make it less advantageous to being limited over being self-employed is a good move. It further goes to simplify the tax system. Does it really? Yes, it does. Because I've been toying with going limited to t- take advantage of some of these changes. Yeah. But now he's just reduced that completely. Um, and if it stops uh, Wayne Rooney being a limited company and puts him on the Man United payroll, which he should be properly, that can only be good for the country. Because it would be costing them more in the... And I and things to employ him. But surely, but surely, Clive, for every Wayne Rooney, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of sincere people out there doing their best, working hard, borrowing money from the bank, setting up their businesses, putting their lives on the line. Are they going to get hit by some of this? Yeah, but 60p a week, that's what they said. 60p well, a week, Nigel. Don't well, get excited about it. But it's about messaging, it's isn't it? It's about messaging, isn't it? You know, yeah. it, 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 it's about, who, you know, whose side are you on? And, and is this government on the side of small entrepreneurs, or isn't it? 
Well, I, I don't. If, 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 it's a, if a bottom line cost to me today was 60p a week, I don't. That doesn't bother me. They could have done far worse things. They could have done far worse, Clive. But actually, isn't isn't the truth of it, Clive? They did virtually nothing today. Well, yes, but I think that was I think that was mm. deliberate. Mm. Mm. And I, I'm fed up with the every year the tax changes and all these changes. All it does it gives jobs to the account. The clever accountants for the rich people to sweep money around. Well, that's certainly true. Now, that I, I mean, you know, that point I cannot disagree with. And if you're uh, listening, my accountant, I'm paying you far too much money, and I'm sure we all feel that. Clive, all I'm saying is, you know, I get there are years for big radical change and years perhaps not to do that. But this Chancellor did promise us disaster if we voted for oh. Brexit, and he didn't even refer to it today. Well, no, and I think, you know, um, your, fr- your friend and colleague James O'Brien spends three hours a day ramming Ramona rubbish down my throat, and I've stopped listening to him like a lot of people I know. At the end of the day, both sides gave very misleading information. We are where we are. Yeah. Once the House of Lords decide they're, they're going to get chopped soon if they don't mm. come into line, we'll begin the process. Um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen in the French and the Dutch elections, because I'm sure that's, oh, that's, all, that's all coming down the track at us, Clive, very, very fast. But can I just say one thing to you? The, one of the great things about LBC is that they have people as diverse as myself and James O'Brien presenting programmes. Now, two more different people I couldn't possibly think of. And Clive, rather than switching the radio off, and I have to say that when I listen to him, I feel like the negativity, I can't bear it. But why don't you, Clive, ring him up and give him a hard time? Oh, because, oh, uh, uh, But, Nigel, I've tried. But what yeah. he does, unlike you and Nick and other presenters, the minute you disagree with him, he cuts you off and then responds to you. Then you have no right uh, to... And that is why I won't tolerate OK, him. no, Clive, I get that. I get that. Give it another go. I mean, but, but, but be aware that nobody on LBC or in the world, is as intelligent as James O'Brien. And I've obviously heard that many, many times. Um, so, you know, your texts and tweets still coming through. The Chancellor should cut our ridiculous, over-generous foreign aid budget before he starts clobbering us, the taxpayer, Andy and Dagenham. You can please some of the people some of the time, most of the people most of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. So they have decided to please themselves, says Dave Howard. Not a bad moment to say that you're listening to the Nigel Farrow Show, exclusively on LBC, and it's 7.45. Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. The Chancellor has broken a manifesto promise and put up national insurance for the self-employed. He says it's only fair, but do you think he's right? Clive Bull on LBC. If you use your phone while you're driving and it's not hands-free, the penalty has been doubled. It's now six points and £200. The trouble is... A lot of us are addicted to our phones. So try this trick. Put your phone somewhere where you can't pick it up. Somewhere you can't see it. The glove compartment. That way, you won't be tempted. Save yourself six points and 200 pounds. Maybe even save a life. Make the glove compartment the phone compartment. Think. Put your phone away. Do you have a pension? Maybe you've got more than one. How do you know if they're in the right pension funds, making as much money as possible for your retirement? Answer is, you probably don't. At The Pension Works, our fully qualified independent financial advisors could add instant value to your retirement fund. Simply text the word YES to 8322 for your free Pension Works health check. That's YES to 8322 today. Your pensions working harder with The Pension Works. Justatrader.com Wash your machine on the blink? No problem. Just show where your clothes on. Job done. And you'll smell like coconut cream. Or get yourself on trustedtrader.com and find the right person to do the job for you. Pop in your postcode and the trade you need, then you can choose from loads of tried and tested tradespeople in your area. Reviewed, reputable, right good tradespeople. Visit trustedtrader.com. All of us at QuickFit would like to say a big thank you with Jaffa's Jackpot. Buy one tyre and you'll get a £25 MOT voucher. Buy two and you'll also get 20% of your next service. Buy three and you'll get an additional 25% of either brakes, batteries, wheel alignment or aircon recharge. And buy four to hit Jaffa's Jackpot. Money off vouchers on these six great services for you, your friends or family. Valid for one year. QuickFit. It's all about the service. Terms and conditions apply. 
Your business is growing. Fantastic. But you need to hire fast. Enter Indeed.com. Already used by over 3 million businesses for hiring. And with more people in the UK using Indeed than any other job site, you'll find more great candidates and sooner on Indeed. Find your next hire on the world's number one job site. Indeed.com. Terms, conditions, quality standards and usage limits apply. World's number one job site based on total unique visitors to Indeed.com. John, uh. I think we need to make our marriage work harder. What? It's the moustache, isn't it? No, it's our marriage allowance. There's up to £220 waiting for us to claim. Although, I think you could lose the moustache. Yes, dear. If you're married or in a civil partnership and one of you earns less than £11,000 and your partner earns less than £43,000, you could receive up to £220. If you were eligible last year and didn't claim, you could get up to £432. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply online at gov.uk forward slash marriage allowance. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. So the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Phil Spreadsheet Hammond, has pretty much lived up to his name by delivering the dullest budget I can record in my entire lifetime. But I don't know, maybe you think he did the right thing by doing basically nothing. I don't know, but I'm going to ask Robert in Dulwich what he thinks. Robert, good evening. Hi, good evening, Nigel. Look, um, we only have to look across the pond to the United States of America where we see that um, Donald Trump has... Uh, I think they've, they've created 300,000 jobs in the last month. That's about right, yes. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and those, those numbers are up, yeah. And that's, you've got Samsung relocating some of their productive facilities into the US. So if you've got a visionary and you've got the uh, business now, you can start to make it work and make people's yep. lives better. Yep, I agree. Right. Um, he, uh, no, this chap Hammond is a Remainer. Um, we've seen, we've heard recently, and there were rumours uh, going back even six months that Theresa May was going to an- announce Article 50 and then go to the country and then get a storing majority because Labour has decided to implode. Right? This yeah. budget, if you look at it, I think it undermines um, her strength a little bit because he's done something. It's like. It, it is a very small um, uh, amount of money, but it does signal, like you say, it does signal something negative. It makes it makes it more difficult for her, for Theresa May, to go to the country. I think this is the action of someone who fundamentally, well, we know he was a Remainer, ah. but he doesn't have the vision. Ah. And you, I think so do you see to... subterfuge here, Robert? Do you see a game being played here? I think there is a game being played. Look, Theresa May, to make Brexit work... Um, and that's assuming she really does want to. But to make it work, she has to have that strong majority. Otherwise, the um, the, the, the EU, the, the commissioners, they'll smell the blood and the, the negotiation will just be harder if she doesn't have a strong well, majority. Well, a lot of that, Robert, depends not on the budget today, but a lot of that depends on what happens to the House of Commons uh, when uh, the Lord's Amendment goes back to them next week and indeed goes back to the House of Lords. So we may well find uh, by this time next week, actually... Uh, that our renegotiations are completely stymied in Brussels. I hope and pray we don't. Uh, but that would be even more serious, Robert, I think, than this budget. Um, do you, I mean, do you think there is any chance of this government actually not just taking us out of the European Union, but taking us in, into new economic territory with a vision? No. Uh, look, I, I campaign strongly for Brexit. In fact, yep. um, I'm actually your UKIP Lambeth chairman. But, oh, right, um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look um, I think that what I've, I've come to a conclusion. Some Ramonas generally uh, are just very angry people and they're not happy, etc. They love the EU, etc. But what I've noticed about a lot of Ramonas, Remainers, they, they genuinely don't have a vision. They don't see the positives. They're quite... Um, yeah. people. I yeah. was with expats two weeks ago in South Africa. People have all retired and been around the world and li- lived and worked around the world and made a great success of it. And they were all voted to leave. And they all said, look, you know, we have to be global. We, and, and, and they decided as young men to go out into the wider world and do business. Yep. And they were all very successful people, actually. With Remainers, there's this security blanket. Oh, we're part of the EU and that's all right. And, mm. you know, when you have 120,000 pages of legislation... All that happens is you just kill business. You do, Robert. You kill business, you kill entrepreneurship. And, you know, the Federation of Small Businesses said last year that small business employers now spend up to 25% of their working week 
just dealing with regulatory issues. Robert, I thank you uh, for everything, including your call. But I'm being criticised on Twitter for this. The red tape you want business freed from is what gives workers protection. Marty, well, maybe it is, but there's not much point protecting workers when they're unemployed. So it's about balance and it's about getting it right. And I'm suggesting, Marty, uh, that actually we've got the balance wrong, but we will do a show one evening on regulation and small business. And Marty, I'll, I, I will want you to be the first person that rings me. But for now, we're going to High Wycombe and I'm going to ask James, what about this uninspiring, dull, boring budget? Well, well, well I, I think you're a little bit like um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, Nigel. Oh, really? You're, Gosh. You've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a contradiction there, because like he says, he says, uh, you know, immigration's the right sort of level, but, uh, you know, we haven't got enough houses. He doesn't see a contradiction there. And I, I think you said you, you think this is the most uninspiring budget since all the, all the previous ones since 76. Uh-huh. But those have, left, those have left us with 1.6 trillion of debt. Yes. So how do we how do we square that circle? The, all these inspiring budgets we've seen before have just left us in ever ever spiraling debt. So I think. I ah, think ah, okay, there. okay. I get the criticism, but I disagree with you. Um, I actually yeah. said that previous budgets weren't uninspiring. Previous budgets were imaginative. Previous budgets had Gordon Brown telling us, "No more boom and bust." I've rewritten economic history. I'm a genius. And that's partly what's led us to 1.7 billion debt. James, all I'm saying is this, that I do honestly think that after the biggest political event in our lifetimes, namely Brexit, I would have expected from a Chancellor of the Exchequer coming out of number 11 Downing Street and into the House of Commons, some leadership, and we got nothing. That's my point, James. Yeah, I agree. But I I do think the... As I understand, I'm, I don't know, I haven't seen the budget details today, but as I understand it, what he was intending to do was to, le- to level the playing fields with, between self-employed and unemployed people. And I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I do think it's a bad signal, maybe, to send <coughs> yeah. it. But in terms of actually, actually levelling the playing field, then why should people who are employed pay more tax than people who are, un- uh, who are self-employed or, indeed, large corporations, as you say? I think that, Yeah, I, I mean, James, I don't... Tax- I don't disagree with the general point, and I've I've conceded this already this evening. I don't disagree that some people pretend they're self-employed when actually they're not to avoid paying the right taxes. I get that, James. But I also feel what he's done today sends the wrong signal to the huge numbers of people who are genuinely self-employed or running their own small businesses. And the message is, you know, that, 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 that we've got Brexit, which for many of those people they thought would be their liberation, and actually all the government's doing is still penny-pinching from them. So so I'm not going to... James, I don't think you and I are too far apart. I thank you very much uh, for your call. I heard you're um, in the car. I trust you're complying with the new rules that came in um, last week. I, of course, myself always comply with all laws at all times. Uh, and I wonder what Sarah in, San- in Sanders did. Were you, Sarah? Come on, tell me you were uplifted that you saw the sunlit uplands as a result of the Chancellor's speech. Well, good evening, Nigel. Very good, good evening. Thank you, and um, I, I need to say a, a very big thank you to you from the country for what you've done to, um, you know, trigger the Article 50, which I hope does happen in some time. We've had a... a yeah, at some point in the next setback. 10 years, Sarah, it will, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Go on. We've had, we've had such a setback, haven't we, from the Lords. Um, and if Theresa May, who does seem to have integrity, who does really seem to want to honour what the country has voted for, this is the moment to hit back at the Lords by looking at the potential of what um, Brexit could do for this country in terms of small businesses. Yes. I mean, we, the, 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 this country needs the small businesses. And to start, you know, um, killing the goose that, that will lay the golden eggs is, is very silly. And, I, and if there's going to be um, a general election coming up um, this year then, you know, you need to keep these small businesses o- online, I would have thought. And, and um, well, you know, well, and, the, mar- and the other thing, sorry. No, I mean, there may or may not be a general election this year. I mean, I suspect that if it all goes bandy next week, if it all goes wrong next week, um, that Theresa May would have no option but to call a general election. But, Sarah, the point you're making that interests me is about the potential for small business post-Brexit. Because we... For the last 40 years, Sarah, have not been making the, the laws, the rules that regulate small businesses. We've been a tiddly voice in a Brussels machine. And that's my disappointment, Sarah, 
is we could have at least had a glimpse, couldn't we, of what the future might be, and we got nothing. Yes, I, I believe that you are a real leader. You understand the importance of morale, um, and that's quite evident. So the, the, the comments you've made, um, you know, get to have a, ne- a day of, um, re- re- uh, of remembrance of uh, you know, Independence Day, for example. Excellent yes. idea. Yeah, why um, not? In years, I do hope in years to come that, that we'll look back and say this was our finest time when, when we broke free or, you know, we got the, we got the permission to break free. Um, my son's emigrated to New Zealand um, he's um, he's he's got he's opened his fourth business now. Good for him. Um, going from strength to strength. Good he's for him. Back. Well, he's not encumbered, Sarah, by Brussels red tape, is he? And I thank you uh, for your sentiments and for your call. My final thought is this simply isn't good enough. It's not good enough to tell the country it'll be a catastrophe economically if we vote for Brexit, fewer jobs and all the things Hammond said. Then suddenly you become Chancellor, you have a budget, you don't even mention it. We needed a little bit of vision. We got no inspiration whatsoever. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. I'm back tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock live from Brussels where Article 50 should have been triggered but isn't going to be. Please get involved with these debates with Ian Collins from 10 but up next it's Clive Bull. Thank you Nigel and coming up so the Chancellor has broken a manifesto promise and put up national insurance for the self-employed. He says it's only fair but do you think he's right? Millions of people are now self-employed but most of them are not wealthy business owners but people on a low income with no job security. So is it a great thing to be self-employed? If you are, should you be paying more tax? And coming up at nine, your chance for some free legal advice when I'm joined by barrister Daniel Barnett for the legal hour. And the number you need here at LBC, 0345 6060 973. On FM, online. On your mobile and on digital radio. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC.